Hi, and welcome to another video on the Casio CTX3000 keyboard. And in this video, I'm going to connect a second keyboard, a controller keyboard, into the Casio. So you've probably seen on the back of the keyboard the um, USB connections. We used one of them um, for the flash drive in another video. And then there's another one here that says to host. And that would be used uh, if you were connecting the keyboard, you wanted to connect it up to a computer and then use um, a computer um, sequencer program or a door in order to um, use the keyboard as maybe as a controller keyboard, controlling the sounds within the, um, within the door. But what I'm going to do here is actually connect the keyboard without a computer into another keyboard so that I can control the sounds of the Casio. So uh, in order to be able to do that, you're going to need to get a box like this. Uh, this is the Kenton MIDI USB Host Mark II, made in the UK, and it's got two MIDI sockets, MIDI in and MIDI out, um, in the standard uh, five-pin DIN uh, configuration and then also here it's got the USB connection to connect it into the keyboard so let me connect this up for you and I'll show you how it all works so the first thing to do is perhaps to connect the keyboard into this box and I'm using a USB A and B cable a bit like the ones you might use for your printer. So this goes into where it says to host. And then the other end goes into USB like that. And now the other thing to do is to get a MIDI cable. So here's a MIDI cable with the kinds of connectors that we need the five pin DIN connectors. And I'm going to plug this into the MIDI in. Remember the general um, way of connecting things together, whatever they are, MIDI or audio is in, always connects to out, and out always connects to in. So we've connected the MIDI in on the box. That means the other end is going to go into a MIDI out. So I've got another keyboard here. It's just a controller keyboard. It doesn't create any sounds of its own. Uh, this is the Archeria Keystep. And on the back, it's got the standard five pin MIDI uh, sockets, MIDI in and MIDI out. So I'm gonna plug the cable into MIDI in, sorry, into MIDI out. So it's gonna, MIDI is gonna come out from this keyboard, from the Archeria, to the Casio. Just move that along. And the other thing we need to do is to put some power into the uh, Kenton box. And it just requires um, a USB mobile phone kind of charger. And now we've got some power into the box here. So now if I play the keyboard, it's now controlling the Casio. And on the key step, I can change the octaves, although it's only a small um, two and a half octave keyboard. We've got uh, control over the octaves. It's also got an arpeggiator on the uh, Archeria, so if I set that going and hold down a chord,
So that's pretty good that you can control, I can now control my Casio from a separate keyboard. The other advantage of doing this is that the Arturia also sends MIDI aftertouch. So when I press down on the keys, I've got velocity, but I've also got aftertouch. You can't um, control what type of effect the aftertouch has on the Casio. It always seems to produce this fairly fast vibrato. But that's quite a neat effect. Uh, and especially on a keyboard of this kind of price range, uh, it's quite a rare feature to have. Now, one of the things that I would find this useful for is to be able to have, say, a bass sound on the Arturia whilst I'm maybe playing a piano voice on the uh, Casio. Uh, in other keyboards uh, you might have used in the past, Yamaha or Korg or Roland, uh, sometimes this is called a performance where you've got several different timbres set to different MIDI channels. So in order to do that on the Casio, you need to go to the song bank and you could perhaps use one of the preset songs to begin with, but let's go to um, one of the user songs. And for the moment, I'll just pick this one here. It's got nothing recorded into it. So if I change my MIDI channel from the uh, Arturia, I'm at now MIDI channel two. This is MIDI channel three. MIDI channel four. It's always going to be, the default is always going to be a piano sound. But it'd be nice maybe to have a different kind of sound over here. So the way to do that is to kind of pretend that you're going to record on the Casio. Let's just move these cables out of the way. So to record a song, it's a short press on the record and stop button. And you want to make sure you're recording on one of the solo tracks. So use the uh, data wheel. I'm now kind of set this to record on track number one. And here I need to change the tone. So I want to look for a bass sound. Just remind myself where they are. One, seven, two. One, seven, two. Okay, so there's a bass sound on the Casio. Let's make sure we're on MIDI channel one on the keyboard. And if I just play back that little bit of recording that I did, I've now got my bass sound here on the keyboard. And if I can change my sound on the piano, uh, to a piano. The other thing uh, that's kind of independent from the Casio is that this keyboard the key step has a sustain pedal in it, so uh, I can be controlling sounds with the sustain pedal as well, and it doesn't affect uh, the Casio at all. And just to finish with, um, I've set up the keyboard with that bass sound. Remember, we've got the aftertouch on the Arturia. I've got a string bass here. I've got a piano layered with 
uh, vibraphone. And then I'm using also a rhythm here and I've muted the bass part. So uh, we'll just get the backing, the drums and the backing without the bass part. So I hope that's given you an idea of the kind of flexibility you've got, even with a keyboard uh, like the Casio. Thanks for watching.